Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at coastal realignment strategies. This is part of Paper 1, Unit C, Coastal Landscapes. Sometimes decisions are made to stop holding the line against coastal erosion and flooding, i.e. to stop protecting the coastline. This usually happens when the land is not considered economically valuable enough to protect. So nature is allowed to take its course and low-lying land is allowed to flood. People are moved out, homes and buildings are knocked down and a breach is made in the existing defences so seawater can flood the low-lying land. This is called coastal realignment as the coastline moves inland and is realigned. It is also known as managed retreat because the way in which the land is flooded is managed. Coastal realignment is controversial as some people will lose their land, although they will be compensated for this. However, it does create mud flats and salt marshes which are important wildlife habitats and will act as natural sea defences. The removal of old sea defences also allows sediment to be transported along the coastline by longshore drift, which enables beaches further down the coastline to have their sand recharged which were previously starved of sediment due to the existing defences up coast. There are many benefits to coastal realignment. For example, it allows material to be transported further along the coastline, so the beaches there will build up, reducing the risk of erosion and coastal flooding, as the wider beaches can absorb more wave energy. Another benefit is that although initially the strategy is expensive due to landowners needing to be compensated, it is much cheaper than continuing to maintain hard engineering strategies such as seawalls and groins. Finally, one of the most important benefits is that new habitats are created in the intertidal zones on the new mudflats and salt marshes. However, there are quite a few drawbacks of this coastal management strategy. The biggest drawback of coastal realignment is the relocation of homes and businesses which have to make way for coastal flooding or erosion. This process is extremely disruptive but also very distressing. An example of where this may happen, where coastal erosion is a huge issue, is North Norfolk. And you can see a picture of that on the screen, the village of Haysborough. The shoreline management plan, or the SMP, is to allow 40 square kilometres of coastline to retreat naturally. And while this will be really good for the environment, it will mean the loss of six villages and the relocation of hundreds of people. People living in areas where this strategy has been chosen often feel very let down by the local council, despite compensation packages. These compensation packages also mean that initially coastal realignment schemes are extremely expensive, despite being much cheaper in the long run. Many councils can't afford to stump these costs up front, so end up having to spend money on repairing sea defences to protect land that is not economically valuable. Finally, huge areas of agricultural land will be lost, along with important coastal habitats. Over time, the new habitats will establish on mud flats and salt marshes. However, these will take years to establish fully. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on coastal realignment strategies. Thank you for watching.